Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful, blessed day today. Glory, hallelujah, to always, always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now, just to give him some thanks right now. Just to give him some praise right now. Just to give him some glory right now. Oh, hallelujah. Today is the day that the Lord has made. And I am so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. Today was a beautiful, blessed day. It was a breakthrough day. It was a miracle day. Just to be, just to be in the presence of the Lord. Another day just to seek him and worship him. And glorify and magnify his holy name. Because God is good all the time. And all the time God is good. And he is so worthy. He is so worthy to be praised. So that's why I thank him the way I do. That's why I praise him the way I do. Glory, hallelujah. That's why I magnify and I shout his holy name. Because I can't do it without you, Jesus. I can't make it without you, Jesus. That's why I put all my, my concerns, my troubles onto you. Because I am not about to put myself in any kind of depression, worried about something, when the only thing I have to do is give it to you. And once I give it to you, I say, thank you, Jesus, because I know that you're going to handle it. I say, thank you, Jesus, because I know that you're going to work it out. I say, thank you, Jesus, because it's already done. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know how you're going to work it out. That's none of my business. The only thing I can say is thank you, Jesus, and trust you while you are working it out. And trust you while you are ready to solve the problem. But in the midst of all of that, Father God, I'm going to lift your name up to the highest high. Because praise, I say praise, is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. And it's not a Sunday thing. Because a lot of you right now today, the only time that you want to give God some thanks and praise and glory is on Sunday. The only time that some of y'all want to give God some thanks and praise and glory is because you want something. Or you don't need a benefit thing. Or he just bless you with an opportunity or an opening door. But the moment, hallelujah, when pain comes, the moment. When suffering come, the moment when struggle come, the moment when hardship come, you act like you don't know who he is. You ain't never heard of him. You take off running. What's the difference between good and bad? There's no difference because God is still the same. He said he'll never leave us or forsake us. That's what he tells us in the book of Hebrews 13, 5, right? He said he's always the same. He said he is a man that he shall not what? That he shall not lie. That's what he tells us in the book of Numbers 23, verse 19, right? So why you can't give him the thanks every day? Why you can't give him the praise every day? And the reason why, you don't have no relationship with him. I know. I'm going to tell you how, you, how I know. Because I was just like, like, like y'all one time. When I didn't have no relationship with Jesus. The only time I thank and praise him when things was going good or I wanted something or he got me out of trouble or he blessed me with something and the moment I got what I got out of him, I took our running too, just like some of y'all did. Just like little cowards. I took our running. I like I ain't know him. I like I ain't heard of him. That was the only time that he heard from me when I was in trouble. That was the only time he heard from me when I needed something. That was the only time he heard from me when he came through. But when the pain came, and the suffering came, and the struggle came, he never heard LT mouth. And I looked myself in the mirror one day, I said, LT, you are so selfish for, to God. And I had to be honest with myself. I had to keep it real with myself. I said, now this is the same God who died for you, who paid the price for you, who died on that cross for you, who even carried that cross for you, who even got spit on and beat on and ridiculed just for you. And I looked myself in that mirror real, real, real close and real hard. And I made a vow to God. I said, God, for now on, I'm going to give you some thanks. I said, God, for now on, I'm going to give you some praise. I said, God, for now on, I'm going to give you some glory. I'm going to magnify your name. I'm going to praise your name, even if I got to do it by myself. And I'll tell you right now today, my brothers and my sisters, Ever since 2012, I've been doing it every single day, giving him the thanks, giving him the praise, and giving him the glory each and every day because I had to build that relationship with him. 
I had to keep my word because his word is true and his word is bond. So I had to make sure that my words were true. I had to make sure that my word was bond too. And once he realized that my word was true and my word was bond, he gave me what my heart desired. And me and God, we've been tight ever since. We've been rocking with each other like two flat ties. Amen. Amen. Because God is my everything. He is my rock. He is my salvation. He is my protector. He is my healer. He is my salvation. He is my everything. It don't matter what I'm going through right now today, the pain and the suffering and the struggle and the hardship, His grace is so sufficient for me. His grace is all I need. And as long as I have His grace, I'm all right. I said, as long as I have His grace, I'm all right. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, come before you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you for this beautiful, blessed day. I thank you for this opportunity, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you're allowing me to be the overseer of your flock right now today, Father God. Father God, you have your way in your house right now today. Father God, your word tells us in the book of Matthew, verse 18 and 19, but two or more gather in your name that you are in the midst. So, Father God, I know for a reason, I know for a fact, God, that you're in the midst in our homes right now. I know that you're in the midst of our television sets right now. I know that you're in the midst of our phones right now. I know that you're in the midst of our laptops right now, our desktops right now, even our iPads or whatever gadget that we have that we are using, that we are watching your service on YouTube, God. We know, Father God, that you're in the midst. Father God, you have your way with us in your house today, God. Father God, you left us up in your house today, God. Father God, your word said your house is a house of prayer, a house of praise, and a house of worship. God, while we're in your house, we're going to pray to you. We're going to worship you. We're going to serve you. We're going to magnify your holy name, and we're going to exalt your holy name in your house, God. Hallelujah. Father God, let the Holy Spirit move through us in your house, God. Father God, we take no credit that's about to go down in your house. All the likes, the dislikes, the views, and the comments, all of them belong to you, God. Father God, we want to say thank you, Father God, for so many people that's coming to you right now today. Just want to be part of your house, God. Just want to be part of your ministry, God. Father God, I thank for all my brothers and my sisters right now today that's turned their life over to you right now today, God. That's coming to the cross right now, God. Father God, I thank for all my brothers and my sisters right now today that's coming to you right now today. And they're asking you your name because they want to be used, God. They want to know more about you, God. They want to be just like you, God. And I want to say congratulations to you today, my brothers and my sisters. That's a powerful move. It's a blessing thing. Father God, you know every last one I needs, God. You know every last one I concerns, God. And Father God, I know that you're going to make a way. I know that you're going to provide, God. Father God, I want to say this. Thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing, God. Father God, we know, Father God, we came here for a reason. And Father God, we ain't leaving here until we come to get what we need to get from you, God. Father God, you continue to speak your words to us, God. Let your promises stick to our spirit, God. And Father God, you continue to have a hold on us, God. Father God, we know at the right time, God, that you're going to, that our prayers are ready to answer, God, that you're going to come through, God. That, Father God, I pray for justice through this service tonight, Father God. I pray for unanswered prayers, God. Father God, I'm praying for our miracle. I'm praying, I'm praying for our breakthrough and our miracle, God. Father God, I'm expecting that from my brothers. I'm expecting that from my sisters. But I'm also expecting from me too as well, God. So, Father God, as we lift your name up in your house right now today, God. Father God, we give you the thanks. We give you the praise. And we give you the glory. In your holy, precious, mighty name. And let the church say, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, coming to you right now today because we are sinners, God. Father God, please forgive me as I repent my sins to you right now today. Please forgive my sisters as they repent their sins to you right now today. And also, please forgive my brothers as they repent of their sins to you right now today. Please forgive us, God, for anything that we have done wrong, God, that is in your eyes. Father God, please forgive us, God, for anything we've done wrong that was not right in your heart, God. Father God, we are sinners, God. We do fall short and we do make mistakes, God. I want to say thank you, Father God, for forgiving us. Thank you, Father God, for cleaning us up. Thank you, for, Father God, for washing us as white as snow. Thank you, Father God, for appearing around us, God. Thank you, Father God, for leading us to the, to the cross, God. I just want to say thank you, Father God. Father God, we got to keep it real with you. We got to be honest, God. Father God, when we make mistakes, when we sin, God, 
And when we fall, God, we're going to come to you and we're going to ask for forgiveness, God. And I want to say thank you, God, for forgiving me. Thank you, Father God, for forgiving my sisters. Thank you, Father God, for forgiving my brothers. In your holy mighty name, amen. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, I just came thanking you for this awesome and beautiful blessed day today. I came thank you for this opportunity right now today. I came thank you for this word. I came thank you for your promises. I came thank you for your grace and your mercy. I came thank you for the food that you have blessed and prepared and put on our table. The clothes and shoes that you have put on our back. I just came thank you, Lord Jesus, how you making a way out of no way. I just came thank you, Father God, for the angels. That is joining us in praise and worship right now. I can't thank enough for the Holy Spirit that's moving through us right now today. I can't thank enough for the God how you moving mountains on our behalf right now today. And we don't even realize it. I just can't thank enough for the God for every opportunity, God, that you bring forth to us, God. Because your word say faith without work is dead, God. So long that we continue to put in the work, God, we know that you are so awesome. We know that you are making a way out of no way. I just can't thank my Father God for the blessing. I can't thank for our breakthrough. I can't thank for our miracle. I can't thank for our anointing. I can't thank for our deliverance. I can't thank for the open doors. I can't thank for the door that you have closed. I can't thank for the overflow. I can't thank for the abundance of rain. I can't thank for our harvest. I can't thank for our due season. I can't thank enough for the God because we are up next, God. I just can't thank enough for the connection. I can't thank enough for the resources. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you please turn your Bible to Job 2 and we're going to read verse 9 and 10. Then we're going to go to Job 19. We're going to finish off at 13 and 19. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Job 2, 9 and 10. His wife said to him, Are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, You're talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all of this, Job did not did not sin in what he said. And God spoke this word to me, my brothers and sisters, because I believe that somebody's going through this right now, because I'm going through the same thing as well. Your attacker is your best friend. Your attacker is someone that you really know. Your attacker is someone who you really love. Your attacker is the one that you're really close to. Your attacker is the one that your heart yearns for. So if you look at it right here, Job attacker is his best friend. His love, his backbone, his support system. The enemy will always use the one that is closest to you, the one that you care for the most. The enemy will always use the one that's close to you because the enemy know how you feel about him and the enemy know how you feel about her. The enemy will always use the one that's close to you because that's the one who can hurt you, who can cut you wide open to the white meat. The enemy will always use the one that's close to you because the enemy knows that y'all have this relationship, y'all have this bond. So what the enemy going to do? He's going to use the one that you call boo, who you call babe. Who you call my lover? Who you call my sweet thing? Who you call my, my, my chocolate drop? Or whatever you want to call him? Or whatever it is that you want to call her? Your attacker is the one that's close to you. Your attacker is your friend. If you look at this text right here, my brothers and my sisters, do you see how the enemy has started using Job's wife against him? He didn't use her in the first beginning because Job had everything. Job had everything a man can ask for. Job had everything a man can wish for. But the moment 
when God removed it from Job because it was only a test because the enemy thought that Job was only praising God for what he had. The enemy told God, he said, if you, if you remove this hedge away from Job, I promise you that he will curse you. I promise you he will do this and he will do that. So God said, give me your best shot. I'm going to show you that he's not going to curse me. I'm going to show you that he's not going to turn his back against me because I know Job's heart. And the only reason that the enemy is using your boo, your babe, your lover, your chocolate drop, your sweet thing to attack you because the enemy already know how fruitful you are, how blessed you are, how anointed you are, and see miracles that's already on your life, and they see favor on your life because why? You was chosen by God, and you was considered by God, and when you are the chosen one, and when God has considered you, God has already full confidence and faith in you that you would not sin against him. The second thing that I love about this text, one, the second thing I love about this text, the reason why Job didn't sin against God, because Job feared God. Hallelujah. You ain't telling me nothing. That's why Job didn't fear God. That's why, I mean, that's why Job didn't fear God, didn't, didn't sin against God, because Job feared him. Job was scared. That's why I didn't sin against God. Because I'm scared of them. I feel. Them. That's why the enemy is using my wife to attack me. But see, one thing about the enemy, what he does, he always going to use the one that's close to you, but he also has some little small little group of posses that's on the outside that's going to attack you too. Like family, in-laws, people at your job, people in your neighborhood, people that you know on the outside. But see, them little small little midget enemies. Them really don't bother you as much as the one who can hurt you. Right now, a lot of wives' husbands has hurt of them. It's a lot of husbands right now today that their wife has hurt of them. And the reason why that you've been hurt by your wife, the reason why you, that you've been hurt by your husband, because the enemy is playing them like a little puppet to attack you in every single way. To cut you open to the white meat. To bring you down all the way to your knees. So you can curse God and die. So you can sin against God. But God already know that you ain't going to curse him. God already know. That you ain't going to go against him. And you sit back and you say. God why are you allowing this. To go down like this. God why are you allowing this. To happen in my life. God is telling you right now today my brothers. God is telling you right now today my sisters. It's only a test. If I would never chose you or consider you, did you actually think that the enemy will be attacking the one that's closer to hurt you? No. The enemy will never attack something if there's no blessing on that person. The enemy will never attack that person if there's no fruit on that person, if there's no miracle on that person, if there's no anointing on that person, if there's no deliverance on that person, the enemy will never attack that person, if they were not called or chosen or considered by God, it would have never done it. Because if you look at Job 1, if you go to Job 1, 8, the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright. I mean, what? Who fears God? That's why Job never sinned. Because why? God already know he feared him. That God was speaking to the devil, asking what he was doing. He said, I'm walking back and forth just to see I can mess with. But I can't touch nobody until what? Till I get permission from you, God. God is allowing the enemy to, a, God is allowing the enemy and the enemy use the one that's close to you to attack you. Your attacker is your best friend. But one thing about your attacker being your best friend, that is only attack you in one area. They attack you in several different areas because they know they're the one that can hurt you. The enemy knows the right one that can get up under your skin and make your skin crawl. The enemy knows the right one that if he can use him and he can use her, that they can make you say things, make you do things, that they can make you turn against God. That's why the enemy is using your husband against you right now today. My sisters, that's why the enemy is using your wife 
against you right now today, my brothers. That's why the enemy is using your parents or your grandparents or whoever that you real close to. The one that the one that can hurt you, the one that can cut you open to the white meat, that one who can do severe damage to you. That's why the enemy is using them to attack you. It's because you are fruitful. It's because you are you are favored, that you are chosen, that you are considered, and there's a miracle on your life. There's an investment on your life. So the enemy is using them to attack you because the enemy has a hit on you. But we must continue to do our part. To stay prayed up and continue to seek Jesus and praise him and worship him during our attacks. Because right now our attacks is not comfortable to us right now today. It's making us feel a certain way. And we looking at the ones who we close to. We looking at the ones who we really love. And some of us right now today took us a while to realize that we're being attacked. And you sit back and you look and say, but what's going on? The enemy has got a hold to him. The enemy has got a hold to her because God has spoken to the devil said you can do anything to him but you can't lay a hand on him. So what the devil going to do? Okay, if I can't touch him which means he can do anything to a God that's anointed but he can't hurt his heart. So the, so if the enemy can't touch the anointed heart, guess who can touch the anointed heart? The husband can touch the anointed heart. The wife can touch the anointed heart. The parents can touch the anointed heart. The kids can touch the anointed heart. But the devil can't do it. I want y'all to think about that now. The devil can do anything to us. But the devil cannot touch the anointed heart. So what the devil does, he used the one that's close to us to touch, up, to touch our heart. Because the enemy already know how close we are to our love. Our loved one. He already know how how we cherish them, how we perish them, how we how we how our feelings are towards them. So he already know he can't touch it. So he's gonna use the one that's close to us to touch it, to hurt us, to bring us down, to make us feel little as little peasants. Come on, somebody ain't telling me that Joe ain't the only one who going through this. Serving LT ain't the only one going through this. I know it's somebody else who's going through the same thing right now today. I know that your husband is attacking you. I know that your wife is attacking you. I know that your children is attacking you. I know that your parents is attacking you. It's because the enemy is telling them to attack your heart because the enemy can't touch your heart. And the enemy is telling them, if you attack them, I can do this for you. I can do that for you. But the enemy knows that we are too strong, that we are too anointed to even do it. Because why? We don't want them problems with God. That's why we will never, never, never sin against Jesus. Because we know we sin against Jesus. We know we have a bigger issue. We have a bigger problem in my hand. Not the problem that we have with our wife. Not the problem that we have with our uh, husband. Not the problem that we have with our children. Not the problem that we have with our parents. But we got a problem with God if we sin against him. We have a problem against God if we walk out of him. We got a bigger problem. And we don't want them problems. And we don't want them issues neither. Not do we? Job didn't. And I didn't either. Can I go a little deeper with you? Amen. Let's go to Job 19, my brothers. And we're going to read verses 13 through 19. That's Job 19. And we're going to read verses 13 through 19. This is part two. He has alienated my brothers from me. My acquaintance are completely estranged from me. My kinsmen have gone away. My friends have forgotten me. My guests and my maidservants count me a stranger. They look upon me as an alien. I summon my servant, but he does not answer. Though I beg him with my own mouth, my breath mm -mm -mm, is offensive to my wife. I am lonesome to my own brothers. So right now, the enemy not only using your best friend, but he's using his little foot soldiers against you too. The enemy is also using his little foot soldiers towards me. I see it at work. And I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it. But God gave me the eyes to see and say, son, do you see how the enemy is also attacking you? 
outside of your home. Do you see how the enemy's attacking you outside of your marriage? He's already using the main one to hurt you, but the enemy has some foot stool. He got some foot soldiers. He got some goons that's on the side too. So when the time when you're when you're away from your wife, the time that you're away from your husband, the time that you're away from your children, the time that you're away from your parents, he also has some goons on the side. He also has some hit squads on the side. He also has some buddies on the side that just like him and they say, guess what? I I want you to attack him too. I want you to cur I want you to put some on him so he can curse God and die. I want you to do something to him so people can see who their who their real true colors are. But we must say, you know what? No weapon formed against me, it should not prosper. So when the enemies are using attacking, he only don't attack the ones that love you. He also attack the ones who really don't love, but they see you the most too. You see more people at your job and spend more time with them than you do at home. So not only that you're getting it in your house, but you're also getting at your job as well. But see, the enemy, the enemy is only attacking not in one way. Look how the enemy also attacking. His wife don't want to have sex with him. Don't want to, don't even look at him in the same. Don't want to kiss him. So not only that she attacking him physically, but socially, mentally, and sexually. So when the enemy is using the one that's close to you to attack you, he's gonna tell he's gonna tell that person you his best friend. Attack him. He also gonna use the one that's close to you, and you'll notice who's the one that's close to you. Your best friend. Your wife supposed to be your best friend. Your husband supposed to be your best friend. Your child supposed to be your your best friend. Your parents supposed to be your best friend. So the enemy will always use the one that's closest to you because them are the ones who can hurt and pierce your heart because the enemy cannot touch your heart. So when the enemy know he can't touch your heart, he going to send somebody that's close to you to touch your heart. So you can just imagine what Job is going through. He all by himself. His wife don't look at him the same. She don't want to talk to him. She don't want to kiss him. She don't want to make love to him. She don't want. She don't want to have anything to do with him. So he's been attacked in more than one way. But instead of all of this, Job is still not sinning against Jesus. Why is that again? Because Job feared God. And all of this, what I'm going through, I'm still not sinning against God. Because why? I fear him. And God spoke that to me so vividly clear this morning. My brother, my sister, I've been, I've been on this text all day long. I just meditated on it all day long, all day long. And it happened around by 4.30 this morning. And the Holy Spirit just hit me and said, son, your attacker is your best friend. And the moment I heard that, that my attacker is my best friend, I knew who my best friend is supposed to be. It's supposed to be my wife. She's been attacking me. Physically, mentally, socially, sexually, because the anointing that's on my life, the fruit that's on my life, the blessing that's on my life, the investment that's on my life, because God has chosen me to do something. God has considered me to do something because I am blameless and upright. I shun evil and I feel God. And when you feel God, the enemy always going to use that one that's close to you to attack you. When the enemy knows when there's an investment on your life, when there's fruit on your life, there's a blessing on your life, there's a miracle on your life, there's a breakthrough on your life, oh help me God, when there's a nothing in your life, the enemy will always use the one that's close to you to attack you. Because God told the enemy, he said, you can do anything to my servant, but you cannot. You cannot lay your hand on him. So the enemy gets smart. He said, okay, I can touch his skin. I can touch his hair. I can touch his hands. I can touch his feet. I can touch everything. But one thing I really want to touch is his heart. But I can't touch his heart. But I know somebody who can. And when the enemy knows who he can get, he always going to get the one that's close to you. The one that you care about the most. The one who can break you down. So that's why you got to stay prayed up. You got to ask God for signs. God, is there trouble in my house? God, what can I do? And God said, I'm preparing you for it. God was preparing Job for it. Even though Job thought he was by himself, he was asking God, God, where you at? He prayed to the north, east, west, and south, but God was with Job the whole time. God is with you the whole time, my brothers and my sisters. Then you turn your Bible to Job 42, verse 10. After Job had prayed for everybody, 
after Job had got on his knees and asked him for forgiveness. The same people who was against him, the same people who was attacking him, were the same people that saw that God brought Job into twice as much as he had before. His wife loved him again. How she loved him again? Because Job had 10 kids. He lost the 10 kids and God gave him a second chance to lay with his wife again. And guess what they had, my brothers and my sisters? 10 more children. The same wife that was attacking him with the same wife at the house eating at the table. The same wife said she didn't love him, loved him again. The same wife said she won't have sex with him, had sex with him again. The same friends who ridiculed him were the same friend who was laughing and eating with him again. The same family members that was against him but the same friends right there. The same friends that your job was against you were the same friends who want to help you to promote you into another position. What you are going through right now today, my brothers, what you are going through right now today, my sisters is a test so God can bless you was twice as much as you had before. You already went through the hell so now you finna go through the later part of your life. This right here is considered a blessing part of your life. This right here is considered a breakthrough part of your life. This right here is considered a miracle a part of your life because there's a miracle that's going to come out of it. Do you see the miracle that came out of this marriage? Do you see the miracle that came out of this situation? Job and his wife, that was good. Then when Job went through the test, she flipped on him. She was his attacker. But do you see the miracle that happened at the end? God can make miracles out of messy and attacking marriage. In a relationship, that's what God is telling me to tell somebody right now today. Your miracle is on the way. Get ready because even though your friend is your attacker, it's a miracle that's going to that's gonna come out of their attack. The enemy always going to lose. It might seem like it's winning. It might seem like it's getting ahead. It might seem like it's breakdancing right now. It might seem like he pop blocking and dropping right now. But when God got to say, when God had the final say so, God said God say that the enemy will never put you to shame, that I will put all your enemies to a shame. You got to believe and stand on God's word and his promises because God said when there's a miracle going to come out of this situation, good God Almighty, my brothers, good God Almighty, my sisters, I'm telling you, I'm talking to somebody right now today that you need to get ready because a miracle is going to come out of this attack. Right now, I know the enemy is attacking you. I know the enemy is hitting your side of the head. I know the enemy don't punch you in the gut a couple of times. I know he don't hit you in the face a couple of times. But God said, don't worry about that kick. Don't worry about that punch. Don't worry about that slap. Don't worry about that kick because a miracle is going to come out of that. Look at Job. Then the miracle come out of Job's situation. God said, you are the Job. But there's a miracle that's going to come out of that situation. And I say, thank you, Jesus, because I believe in my miracle. I walk like my miracle is here. I dance like my miracle is here. I preach like my miracle is here. I praise and worship like my miracle is here. God said, get ready for your miracle. Your miracle is on the way. And if this word is for you, and you know God is talking about you, I want you to give God some thanks and praise and glory in his house right now. Amen. Amen. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying this simple little prayer that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. Get ready for your miracle. This servant minister LT, always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him, always honor him. Your miracles is on the way. I love y'all. Stay blessed. Amen.